Yes, please come. Tell me your name, please. Uh, Stan. Stan? Yes, Stan. Years ago, one of the things I received from one of the teachers I had was to see if every action that I'm about to take would be for God or for the ego. And uh, I've been doing that largely for a long time. And in recent years, also have stopped actually sitting in meditation. It feels like when I'm able to be aware and stay focused on the question, then I'm, I'm, I'm in meditation, not doing meditation. And doing it for God is, now that I'm hearing you talk about the soul, it feels much more real, personal. And yes. My question is about this practice of looking to see that what I'm doing is from the soul versus sitting in meditation. Can you say something about that? Is meditation something that would be still necessary to sit in and do, or...? It depends on how long the meditation is, because when you do a short meditation, it is good to quiet the system, generally. But when that meditation goes into an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, what you're basically doing is you're putting your body into a position of discomfort. And so the awareness starts to move out and you start to go into increasing experiences of, of dissolution of identity. So it takes you away from this, actually, from, from the very system that is doing that meditation. When you practice the kriyas of actually just feeling the soul, connecting with it, tuning into it, and tuning away from the noise of the ego and into the signal of Source. You're very present, you're here and now, and the awareness does not leave, it does not detach from anything. So this whole system gradually becomes a a servant of the soul. In the beginning of this practice, you take on an identity, you know, Stan. What's your mother's name, Stan? Shulamit. Shulamit. And where were you born? South Africa. South Africa. So, Stan, son of Shulamit from South Africa, where in South Africa? Johannesburg. Johannesburg is taken on as an identity, as a slim identity at the beginning of this practice, so that he can actually bend down and surrender to that soul, to that source. He tries to feel that impulse beyond the noise of the ego, that loud, demanding ahankar. He tries to feel, what is that truth saying? What is impulse, impulse? When he is in this sadhana, he is in an active, continuous, lifelong meditation, which is this discerning acting, discerning acting. And at one point, what happens is Stan falls away, the doer falls away, and this thing becomes a servant of that which is the truth of this Antaratman, this soul. That is the <coughs> sadhana to be practiced, the practice itself. It's a very, very, very challenging yet interesting practice because you're present, you're not tuned out, you're not blissed out. The experiences of joy, it's not of this blissed out state. But it's present, you're real. She's real to me in this moment. 
So there is a contour, there is a coherence in the system which is unknown to those that are spaced out. Because people sitting in this room are sitting here because they're seekers, no? They're not sitting here because it's entertainment, they're actually interested, otherwise they would rather be outside there and have a coffee in a cafe. This, this call is the call to touch the Truth with your fingertips, to feel this Presence, it's a call. But very often that call is in the opposite direction from what should be reached. <coughs> Any practice, extreme practice will take you out, it won't keep you here. Whether it is the enquiry, who am I, who am I, at one point it's, oh, so I am the one observing, and then the observer is observing the observed. Then there is another observer that is suddenly created in the thinking, who is observing the observer, who is observing the observed. Then suddenly there's another layer of an observer, who is observing the observer, who is observing the observer, that is observing the observed, and it can go ad nauseum into insanity. And then, boom, the awareness leaves, because it cannot handle the conceptual torture. And then samadhi states are experienced. So one doesn't want to come back into this torture, so one stays out there and detaches more and more and more from everything. I'm generalizing, of course. So if you want that, then the God that you are giving to, that is a creation of your, of your, of the conceptual, because the actual solid experience will be in here, else we wouldn't be in a body. Why this body then? If one wants to, if one is so enamoured of the cosmic, then might as well give up the body and be there permanently in that oneness. But the, the awareness of this and its gradually increasing consciousness of itself is what that joyousness in this life is about.